Thanks, oh God. <laughs> we're not poor. <laughs> Oh, a second, apologies. <laughs> Chair, just um, so you know, um, Carolyn Sharp was due to be presenting the item on the chip plus. Let me just turn this up. Unwell today, so I'll be covering the item for her. Right, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I should I should probably read from my notes and ask for the wrong person, but if you just interject at that point, uh, we'll, we'll do. Oh. Right, and we call her again. Yes. Oh, well, yeah. I was just on another call with Councillor Coban, who was um, in the street making his way here. So oh, so. I see right. he's, well, I hope he's not far oh, yeah. away. And then we saw Councillor Kempi run out as we yeah. went in. He, he's gone to get his notes. notes. <laughs> so, yeah, right, we call her again. So I'll, I'll carry on as far as I can get. Um, again, the contained exempt items set out in 14 to 18. Uh, and notice that the remain meeting private has been given. And I think we will have to because we've got some 10 minutes. Yep, yep so we will. Um, there's no deputations. If I can move to the unrestricted minutes of uh, the meeting on the 23rd of October, can the committee agree those minutes? Agreed. And we have our action tracker, which says it's attached, but is it? Okay. Thank you, Ross. That's it. Okay, someone's a little old about something. If you could uh, just, I don't think there's anything on the actions tracker we're expecting at this meeting, but we're up to date on that. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. So if we can move to the next item, which is the residential on street electric vehicle charging. Uh, we got report for decision on that. And if I could ask uh, now Dominic Cucumber of Constant McCall to introduce this, please. Hi. 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 Right, you're in the room. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Welcome. A novel experience for me as well. Okay. Um, so uh, this this paper has come about off the back of uh, the contract for minerals that was uh, agreed by the same committee in uh, July 2022, uh, which awarded uh, two contracts, uh, one for slow lamp column EV charge points and for fast charge points to be rolled out across the borough as part of uh, Hackney and Solis, um time action plan and EV strategy. Um, in the interim, uh, two major events have, have happened. Uh, one is the um, the war in Ukraine and subsequent change in energy pricing, which has made, uh, rendered the original contract and uh, pay-as-you-go price submission um, uh, and or unsustainable. Uh, and so this uh, sets out the reasons and the recommendations to change the page go price uh, upper limit um, from uh, day one when we start the pricing, which will be in uh, January 2024. And second to that, also the second event, the good news is that the council has been awarded £500,000 of local electric vehicle infrastructure funding for a pilot scheme. And that will be used to deliver 70 electric vehicle charging points for car clubs to help electrify the car club fleet in, in Hackney. Um, and this will also unlock additional revenue share um, from that was originally agreed uh, from 10 to 12.5%. So increasing the overall amount of money that will come through the charging. Uh, Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, any questions or comments on the report? Jeff yeah. Ambassador Kennedy. Sorry. Um, Jeff, yeah. just for the minutes. So, page 15, the cover report. Um, that There's three extra notes there, aren't there? It's 500,000 we're talking about, not 500 million. <laughs> Oh, 
Yeah. I'm, I'm on the right page, aren't I? I've just gone in and fixed it, by the way, if anyone thought I've done it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you've, it says you've 500 it. million. Yeah. Yes. There, there is a 500 million number. There is a 500 million number. Yes. yes. Oh, yeah. wow. Okay, okay so, so I need this explaining, therefore. Yeah. So uh, the 500,000 pounds is from the, it's a grant that we received from uh, the office from zero emission vehicle. Um, and we, so that is 500,000 pounds. The 500 million, which is um, at least paid of one for me, uh, is the value of the contract too. So over 15 years, uh -huh. we expect uh, the the end user contract value, concession value to yeah. be 500 million, which is a very high number. But, wow. Um, that have is, we ever signed anything off on that? <laughs> so, so this is the, the revenue that uh, the operator will generate over that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the value of the concession contract is always based on the revenue that the operator is going to accrue over the if the, over the life of the contract. So that's why okay. that contract. But okay. Um, so I've got, I've got two questions. Um, how does that relate to the 500,000 extra? Um, and uh, uh, my, my other lack of understanding is contract three, therefore, is that's 250 million, yeah, as per the cover. But I don't understand from the body of the report where contract three comes in. Is that so? You come back from the chain, the price chain, you so contract two is for ice charges, so those that. Uh, right. five points that uh, will be able to charge two vehicles simultaneously. Um, that they're, they're larger, they'll be on bill lengths mm. carriageway with, with two bays and two cars plugged in. Okay, um, and they can deliver more electricity effectively because they're high yeah. power. So, we expect them to, um, to generate more revenue because they'll, they'll deliver more electricity. And then, contract three is the lamp column charges so they'll be affixed to a lamp column and very low power and low contract volume and the 70 new ones will be spread across both those two contracts uh they will all be charged yeah, so they're all contract two yeah okay which is why the body of the report only talks about contract two yes yes because the price uplift applies to both yeah oh, man. The, 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 it, 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 it's not exactly a red but they don't it doesn't actually impact the overall contract value what it does affect is what we can do within that contract in terms of delivering the number of extra, yeah. extra units okay and the revenue share that the council can ask that yes as a result of this injection of cash that we are putting into the contract. So the way the contract is negotiated, the contract that this, uh, the committee approved back in July 2022 yeah. allows the council, as some when we secure grants uh, to inject that into the contract, which would then allow the council to be able to receive additional um, uh, share of the revenue over the life of the contract. All right. Yeah. Okay. It, so where we don't secure grant, it stays at ten percent. No, that's been applied now across the whole fifteen years. Yeah. So the the twelve point five uplift. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. That's that's okay. all right. right. Yes. Um, right. Right. One more. Go on. Sorry. Okay, go for it. Um, this is. We're now fixing the price for ten years. But we fixed the price before and. Presumably, if there's another world stock, it's that we can change that in built into this. Uh, if, so, what what we have built, hopefully, the contract itself when we negotiated allows for variation in the market and inflation, and those things are built in. Um, and so, we're hoping we won't have to make any changes in the contract. We'll just be able to to over mm -hmm. that that period. But if something unforeseen does happen there is the ability to come back to this committee and request a further variation okay so yeah i'm just again because if we go the other way as well it would be a very large drop in prices yeah. so what would, 
same apply then a bit uh, yes, so what we're talking about here is a, is a, is a upper limit of the cap. We don't expect these prices to be charged ever, really, um, but they are just there to provide um, some the ability for the businesses to operate sustainably. Uh, obviously, on electric vehicles, any other questions or comments on that? Uh, sorry, yeah, go on. I can't miss it. Um, I can't miss it. It's gone. No, I, mean, I don't have nothing to say. I mean, like, yeah, I'm sure offices have sort of, uh, have quite a bit, but I'm, you know, I don't want to sort of repeat a lot of what we've said. But yeah, I mean, this is obviously a variation to help us sort of make it competitive, but also being able to deliver on our commitment for the people of Hackney. Um, I'm not sure if offices have sort of touched up on some of the benefits of the. Sort of the, on, in in terms of the, the contractual, but in terms of the the um, discount that it offers for residents as well, mm -hmm. um, as well, and that's the system that we're working on to look at that. So as part of the the model that we're we're putting forward, um, this has got a huge benefit for our residents, and it will benefit massively from this. Okay, uh, just I I, I don't so I'm, so I'm just quite hesitating because I'm between the exempt bit and the. <laughs> I was going to ask about the revenue share going forward. If I could do that, how do we? Yeah, how we? How we? Uh, if I do that in the open bit of the meeting, you know, looking at we we talk about a huge amount of money. Uh, how how have we ensured we maximised that going forward? Yeah, so the revenue share was actually agreed through the initial tender process, and that's already been publicised in the previous contract award report. So we can talk about that. Um, the 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 increase in cost here is all the input costs from the electricity so there isn't a change to the um the profit that the supplier is making or the, the council so at the moment um we still expect to make the same amount of money over the scheme over the 15 years which has risen from uh 10 million pounds as the original uh up to uh 12 and a half million um, but that is based on the, the the initial model. That will vary depending on the uptake of EVs um, and the yeah, effectively the uptake of EVs is going to be the big driver. Okay, so um, now there there is an exempt appendix, and unless members indicate that they want to ask questions on exempt appendix, I'll move to the recommendations in my section three, three one or three two. Can we agree those? Okay. Okay. So, item eight: New Homes Program Multidisciplinary Engineering Consultancy Services, and I think Brom. Now it was Brom and Thomas. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, hi, hi, yeah, thanks. Right, welcome again. Thank you. Um, Good to see you in real life. Yeah. So um, this contract is in relation to the new homes program that's the part of um it's one part of how the council is delivering the commitment to a thousand new social rent homes within this manifesto commitment and um, so the overall program received cabinet approval in december 2022 and this year since that approval has been spent building the teams that will deliver those pro those house that that housing program and so i don't know if i need to go into any background here for people so there's there's a range of about 15 sites um there's then within that then we have architects um a planning consultant um a cost consultant and then this multidisciplinary consultant pr proposal Will work. This person, this consultant, will work across all the sites, across all the projects within within the program, and will be delivering all the key technical services, engineering services, to meet our sustainability standards. And um, it also covers all the building safety aspect with the fire consultant, and also the transport and traffic related parts of the work re required. Um, so hence the scale of the point the the proposal brings it to this committee um so the report presented to you this evening asks for the approval of that procure of that contract award um we went through a restricted open tender procedure working with our colleagues in procurement um a scope of works was defined we then went to a selection questionnaire and then a full conversation to tender um 
that tender was scored on a 70% quality and 30% cost basis. And we now have a, a proposal to appoint bidder D um, who effectively won that won that tender process. Um, I can give more detail on any aspect that people require. Do you want um oh, okay. we'll see if we have any questions? Yeah, let's go. I would just thank you very much for that. And obviously, you know, another really important contract mm -hmm. um and step towards our you know our program to build thousand new homes and there's two thousand isn't it <laughs> uh, and and obviously the, the appropriate technical consultancy with that's a really important part of that yeah are there any questions from members uh councillor kennedy um yeah it's a comment that morphed into a question so really good to see that it was a 70 percent 30 percent quality price split and we should be prepared to shout about that um because it's absolutely the right thing to do great to read a, um, 8.5.1 about the social value benefits and that the successful bidder is engaging with local schools and community and youth organizations and um, I can't emphasize enough just from the experience of the one site that is in my ward how important it is going to be to, to complete that engagement and absolutely be talking to the people at the school gate over the road from the site, the people who live on the buildings overlooking the site who have undergone difficulties with their relationship with the council as a housing provider. Um, and if they, it, it will help us so much for them to feel fully engaged in what happens and how the, the new builds are built there. And, and those organisations that we're engaging with need to be able to answer the question about and what's the council doing about improving our homes as we overlook wonderful new ones being built that we would really all like to move into but we've been told we can't all move into because it, there aren't enough of them yeah. and getting that right will absolutely make or break our, the new homes project i think so yeah. that's why it's so brilliant to see the, the, the 70 percent but uh, does the successful bidder know what a difficult job that is? Or do they fully appreciate it? I get the impression from the papers that one of the reasons they won the bid was because they do. I, I think, yeah, absolutely. I would I would say they, they absolutely do. And actually, we have, through that quality and cost balance, we actually selected um, the consultant that came to us with the best knowledge of this borough. There's a lot of consultants out there that can deliver very, very big schemes on their own that are much more standalone much less dependent on that relationship with their neighborhood but this program of homes are small sites they are complex and they are very piecemeal across our borough and that's the nature so the consultant that we are working with has that experience yeah and they they know um they they know the borough and they know the nature of this sort of work and they impressed us with other work of that scale so, yeah and, and that but your wider issue will be picked up within this contract and the wider work of consultation that we're doing and things like residents doing groups that are being established as we at the moment yeah. yeah i would like to pick that up in the exam um okay part of me, if that's all right yeah okay so um we should probably delay the recommendation to the exam piece as well yeah well, we have to. Really. Yes. Nine, then extensions. Sorry, are there any other questions or comments on that? And we can just go back to it when we exam data. No. So we move to nine, the extension of temporary accommodation dynamic purchasing system. And I think Claire Oldham, sorry, not who's good to introduce this. Claire's on there. Claire's on there. Okay. Hi, yeah. Good evening, everyone. I'm Claire Oldham. I'm the operations manager for temporary accommodation and housing supply. I'm here to introduce the report for the extension of the temporary accommodation dynamic purchasing system. This is the system that allows us to procure temporary accommodation for homeless residents. It enables the benefits and housing needs service to fulfill their statutory duty. Um, it's a rolling tendering system. So suppliers apply via um, responding to a series of questions 
um, and then they're accepted by uh, with a scoring panel and they're accepted by that process. Um, if for any reason anybody wasn't successful, they can go away, revisit their application and come back. Um, the current system has been in place for seven years um, and by extending it, it enables us to continue with business as usual and be legally compliant. Yeah. So we're proposal is for an extension of four years. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. And obviously another huge and really important contract. Um, unfortunately, you know, a, a huge amount of the council's time and the effort, money, you know, and the thoughts go on to, to try to dissolve, resolve for uh, almost this problem. And it's, uh, you know, one, the, the big thing to do and a lot of really important work represented in this report. Um, but so can I ask if the members have any questions or comments? I've got some. No. Yeah. Councillor Kennedy, if uh, if they're not dealt with before. Yeah. Um, we vary in the paper between four years and up to four years. I presume it's up to four up, years. Up to four years, yes. Yeah. Um, and does it have to be in year-long chunks? Yes. So it's essentially, it's a one plus one plus one plus one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. I, I would have been worried if we were stuck. For, oh, sorry, it does say that. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, my question is: I go to the risk assessment in uh, the table in nine. Yeah, section nine. I was a bit alarmed by the non-compliance with procurement regulations uh, risk. They're high, 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 and I also note there's quite a lot. There's a lot of uh, suppliers are really outside the system, and just wonder how we can. So I um, should, yeah. What, what's the answer to that? Uh, that that whole series of high risks there, and B, what can we do about the number of uh, suppliers that are outside the system? So we've been doing a lot of work with some of the uh, suppliers that are around the system outside the system. We've um, some of the things that we've done in the report there. We've worked with them to try and improve their the system itself is a bit clunky. We've tried to support them through using it to make the the, um, the application process more efficient. We've held sessions with them individually to try and support them to do that. We're doing regular chasing and we have regular discussions with suppliers. Um, we're starting to get a little bit more um, financially forceful in terms of um, where we've got um, non-compliant suppliers, we've said where they're coming to us for rent increases, which is under the, in the current market. There was a lot of that requests. We've said that we're, we're not going to move forward with those until they've completed the process. Um, we have gone, we have put, um, a, well, threatened, which sounds a bit harsh, but suggested a suspension of payments for um, one of our recent suppliers that is uh, without, and that has actually worked. We're, we're, we're a little bit hand tied by the fact that the the power in all of this is pretty much with the suppliers because at the end yeah. of the day in the current environment we can't afford for them to walk so mm. we're trying we're walking a delicate balancing act between the two okay I understand that and I think that's probably our, well my next question was to be about sustainable issues and, um, and, and the very large contract but we're not getting back much in terms of uh, you know our uh, procurement uh, strategy objectives in procuring better society fair delivery um, it didn't cause these issues but um, you know I, I suspected in formulation that question the answer would be the one you've just given that in fact we haven't really got the whip hand but it given the amount of money we are spending here you know at some point it would be good yeah. to try and get more out of that than we do. Yeah, I think it's something we could probably put some more focus on. Yeah, going forward. Great. It would, be, it would be good if you can do that to hear about that uh, at some point. I know it's not an easy job or a quick one. Yeah. Okay. We shall take that away and yeah. attempt so to do we'll some work. We'll put that in our actions tracker, but we'll negotiate a, a date. <laughs> yeah. Which may be a long time. All right, then. Uh, I think, Councillor Kennedy, did you want to ask something about local housing allowances? Um, oh yes, of course I did. Thank you for, for reminding me. So we've just in the in the budget yeah. um, had the update of the local housing allowance, um, and how does that feed into 
this contract and, and actually allow us perhaps to be able to do some of the challenge back that we've just you know, spoken about because it, it feels like that should give us a bit more control and a bit less reliance on these suppliers to some extent or am i misunderstanding the way it, yeah i mean it there is correlation but it's it's a, it's a difficult again a difficult dynamic so the local ho housing allowance going up yes that is a good thing um but it still doesn't bring the uh, in line with full market value of particularly with properties in hackney so still if we were charged also, it, the local housing reflects more about what we can pay in housing benefit of, to our customers in order to make properties properties affordable. So, yes, there will be more housing benefit available and the market and they'll get closer to a market rent, but they'll still be way below a market, a market rent. But on top of that, for every time someone um, I don't I mean, I won't go into huge details in this, but the, the effect of the benefit cap means that lots more people will just fall into the cap so they won't necessarily get more money. So the so yes, for a small for a small portion of properties and a small part of area, it will be an improvement in terms of affordability for customers. However, overall, the effect is going to be uh, basically a small sticking plaster on what is an enormous problem. Okay, yeah. Does that does that make any sense? Yeah, it, it, yeah. it does. But it's it's depressing. very comforting. It's depressing us. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it is. It was very much championed as such a great thing, which we're not knocking it. We take anything that helps. But overall, it's not going to make a significant difference. These yeah. these suppliers that are already charging above local housing allowance, perhaps because a lot of these uh, in this contract are nightly rated property. So you pay per night. They're not going to come back and say, oh, look, local allowance has gone up. We're going to charge you less. Those that are charging local allowance will now come back to us and say, can you pay more? Right. Okay. Thank you. Um, I've had discussions about aspects of temporary accommodation recently in my, my other roles, and I know the mayor's been involved with them as well. Uh, and we do understand, you know, what immense pressures you're under uh, in trying to sort of uh, deal with this. So thank you for all of that, and thank you for the report. Anyway, if we could move to recommendation, sorry. Yeah. If we move to recommendation three one, can we wish you to agree the uh, the contract as set out the scheme rather, isn't it? As set out in um, uh, uh, there, and we talked about it earlier actually. Probably yeah. Yeah. Happy with that. Agreed. 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 Which brings us on to the city and Hackney young people's clinical health and wellbeing service briefing report. So this is not really asking for a decision, but it's updating on what's going on. It's really just a matter of record, as I understand it, and. There's been extensive discussion at this at scrutiny and elsewhere before. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I don't know. Um, does any uh, any members? Chris, Sorry. Chris is here. If All right, you Chris. Did you want to do an introduction? Um, not not especially. I mean, it it stands that the report does cover something which is now slightly historical because the service has concluded. Um, <clears throat> what we've been focusing on probably in the last week really is making sure that all matters relating to an ending of a clinical service have been suitably dealt with so transfer of records updating of websites um we did have a look today there are a few websites that do take a little bit longer to to update but in the main if you're a young person seeking a sexual health service you now should be fully aware of the fact that there are lots of services available so the ending of this service hasn't led to any deficit in the service um, and that you will be able to continue to access the services at the Homerton Hospital um, actually in the same location. Um, and we are continuing to work with the Homerton about how we strengthen our sexual health and reproductive health services. We have a strategy which we've just finished consultation on. It is due to come to the uh, Hackney Health and Wellbeing Board in January uh, and we'll have an action plan. And some of those actions will absolutely talk about how we increase access and uptake of sexual and reproductive health services for young people the reason essentially we took this decision was for historic very poor performance um, the service model wasn't right the promotion of the service wasn't right and so by ending the service we we did not do this in the terms of making a saving we did this because of um, chronic and continued poor performance by by the provider so um, as part of the strategy we will be looking at how we can get a better service model um, and increase uh, access and uptake by um, children and young people of what is obviously a much needed service in 
Hackney and also in the city. So very happy to answer any questions, but um, I'm confident that the service has been successfully uh, finished uh, and all of the information um, that we can immediately update has been updated. But it's essentially if somebody turns up to where the old service was provided, they will be turning up into where there is a sexual health service anyway, so they will get a service. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Just the one comment, yeah. Chair, that this went to children and young people scrutiny, went to health scrutiny, um, and I, I wonder if it need to be here. I think there's a, there's a question for us if we think there's been a sufficient member oversight of a decision to end something, do we need to concern ourselves with it here at CPIC? Anyone want to come out on that? Yeah, I think you're right, Councillor Kennedy. I think it, this is really more about um, members of this committee have oversight over the procurement pipeline in terms of anything that is there as high risk and medium risk procurement. Uh, and I think the, the purpose of taking bringing this report uh, to this committee is for us to be for, for members to be aware in case of any questions around why the, con the procurement was on the pipeline and it's taking off. But what we're going to do as procurement officers is we're going to take this off the procurement pipeline and it's for you to be aware that as, as and when we do that, any question that comes, if, you know, you're aware that actually this has been discussed here as well. But you're right, maybe in the future, uh, once this is being considered by other committee, we might just make a decision internally not to bring it further to this committee uh, in the future. Okay. Thank you. Okay. That, that seems fair, fair comment. Although I might ask a question under the exempt bit. Have it settled there. D does that mean you want me to to to, to remain? It does, Chair. Oh, okay. Yes, please. Yeah, but we're not for long. Don't worry. Okay then. Um, so there being no other unrestricted business, and I just pause there for a second. There isn't. Uh, the date of the next meeting will be held on the 8th of January at 5pm, as planned to be. So if I could um, now move the press completely excluded from the proceedings of the Cabinet uh, Committee during consideration of exempt items 14 to 18 on the agenda on the grounds of light in the view of the nature of business of Jeff B. Transact. If that were members of the public to be present, there will be disclosure of exempt information as designed in paragraph 3 of Schedule 12A of the Local Government Act. 72 of the members. This is what's a topology, isn't it? Anyway. Okay. Um, we, we'll Make sure you guys stop. 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 Okay.